Right now, there's a lot of very smart scientists all over the world trying to figure out ways to make batteries more efficient as part of the relentless quest to provide the energy storage that renewable technologies and electric vehicles are going to need in mind-boggling quantities as those two revolutions continue their explosive growth. In fact, we looked at one of those research groups in the last programme, which you can watch by clicking up there somewhere. And at the same time, there's another group of very smart scientists trying to figure out ways to remove carbon dioxide from our atmosphere as part of our desperate attempt to keep global atmospheric temperatures to below two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Those two technologies have been converging for some time, and in the last couple of months they've reached collision point in the form of carbon dioxide batteries. So what exactly does CO2 battery technology mean for the future of energy storage and climate change? Hello and welcome to Just Have a Think. Two major scientific papers have been released in the last couple of months, both of which demonstrate revolutionary new ways to harness the power of carbon dioxide to help us in our battle against carbon dioxide. Back in September, researchers at the University of Illinois revealed a lithium carbon dioxide battery that boasts a far higher energy density than even the best current lithium ion batteries. Tesla's 2170 lithium ion batteries are generally reckoned to be about top notch in the EV battery world with an energy density of 265 watt hours per kilogram. But the team at Illinois say their battery carries 1876 watt hours per kilogram, which is more than seven times higher than Tesla. In fact, these kinds of batteries have been cluttering up scientific laboratories for some time, and they've even got a collective name. They're called beyond lithium batteries. Lithium oxygen batteries are another breed being actively pursued, as is a lithium sulfur variant. A lithium carbon dioxide battery, of course, has the distinct advantage that it uses carbon dioxide, which the scientists tell us is a good idea. The problem with chemistry, though, is that one way or another, whatever you put in at the start of a reaction has to come out at the end of the reaction, albeit in a possibly very different configuration. When lithium CO2 batteries discharge, the product is typically lithium carbonate and carbon, with a catalyst at the cathode speeding up the diffusion of the CO2. Those products all balance the chemical equation out nicely, and everyone's happy, right? But when a typical lithium CO2 battery is being charged up, while the lithium carbonate recycles nicely back into its original constituent parts ready to go again, the carbon tends to just stick to the catalyst on the cathode, and that quickly clogs everything up and causes the battery to fail within only a few charging cycles. So the researchers at Illinois used new materials in their experimental battery to help encourage the recycling of both the lithium carbonate and the carbon. For the benefit of the sciencey types among you, specifically, they used lithium as the anode and molybdenum disulfide nanoflakes as a catalyst coated onto a gas diffusion layer to form the cathode. The electrolyte was made up of ionic liquid dimethyl sulfoxide solvent with a lithium salt. And that's an electrolyte solution that the scientists demonstrated as being able to get the carbon back off the catalyst and back into the recycling process again. And all of those modifications mean a battery that effectively recycles all of its components properly and results in 500 charging cycles with only a 5% reduction in capacity. And don't forget, you're getting seven times the energy density in this battery compared to a normal lithium ion battery, which would mean our phone batteries could be shrunk to only one seventh of their current size for the same energy output, or even more exciting still, without increasing the size of a battery pack in an electric vehicle, it could deliver seven times the energy to keep you going. And those advantages would translate across to grid scale energy storage too. So this is potentially a pretty transformative development. At the same time as all this research was going on, another team of very smart scientists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, was developing a revolutionary new way to pull carbon dioxide out of the air using an electrochemical process not dissimilar to the technology being developed at Illinois. Carbon capture and sequestration 
isn't a new concept. In fact, it's one of the key elements in the IPCC recommendations for climate change mitigation. But existing methods tend to rely either on a chemical process called solvent scrubbing using amines or on oxyfuel combustion. Both these techniques only really work on a gas stream that has a very high percentage content of carbon dioxide, typically more than 10%. And you only find that kind of concentration in the flue emissions of fossil fuel power plants or industrial plants. There are also very big bits of kit that take up space in those facilities and if they have to be retrofitted, they usually require all sorts of other modifications to be made to existing infrastructure and machinery. And the energy required to run the process can sap as much as 25% of the overall output of the plant. As a result, the fossil fuel industry dislikes these contraptions intensely and has been extremely slow to adopt them at scale. But this new method is significantly less energy intensive and expensive, the researchers say. The device they've created is essentially a large specialized battery that absorbs carbon dioxide from a stream of air or exhaust gas passing over its electrodes as it's being charged up and then releases the pure CO2 gas as it's being discharged. A really big breakthrough is that this new system is effective at virtually any concentration level, even down to the 400 parts per million currently found in our atmosphere. And that makes it a potential game changer in the global race to mitigate the worst effects of climate change. One of the key ingredients here is the use of quinones. Quinones are a class of organic compounds themselves derived from aromatic compounds like benzene or naphthalene. They're particularly attractive in this arena because of their large redox potential, which is a measure of their ability to acquire electrons from or lose electrons to an electrode, which causes them either to be reduced or oxidized, hence the name. Each stack of electrodes in this new battery system is coated with a polyanthroquinone, which is composited with carbon nanotubes. You know, carbon nanotubes, they're the ones that are kind of like graphene rolled up into a tube. They're particularly useful in battery tech because they're a high surface area carbon material, which significantly enhances the overall conductivity of the electrode material and increases the area of electrolyte exposure. As the battery charges up, these electrodes, which have a natural affinity for carbon dioxide, react very easily with CO2 molecules in the airstream or feed gas, even at the very low concentration levels we talked about earlier. And when the battery is discharged, not only do you get energy out like a normal battery, but you also get a constant stream of pure carbon dioxide that can be captured and stored. In a working plant, for example, in a power plant where exhaust gas is being produced continuously, two sets of stacks of these electrochemical cells could be set up side by side to operate in parallel, with flue gas being directed first at one set for carbon capture, then diverted to the second set while the first set goes into its discharge cycle. By alternating back and forth, the system could always be capturing and discharging the gas. In the lab, the team has proven that the system can withstand at least 7,000 charging discharging cycles with a 30% loss in efficiency over that time. And the researchers are confident that they can quite easily improve that up to anything between 20,000 and 50,000 cycles, which would be quite phenomenal. And then there's the energy saving, which comes from the inherent efficiency of the materials that they use. The new system uses about one gigajoule of energy for every tonne of carbon dioxide captured. Energy consumption in existing systems can vary between one and 10 gigajoules per tonne, depending on the concentration of CO2 in the airstream. And the icing on the cake is that the whole process operates at room temperature and normal atmospheric pressure. So no need for expensive heating or compression technology. This radical and quite revolutionary technological breakthrough was developed by MIT postdoc Sahag Voskian during his PhD, along with Alan Hatton, Professor of Chemical Engineering. Voskian tells us the greatest advantage of this technology over most other carbon capture or carbon absorbing technologies is the binary nature of the adsorbent's affinity to carbon dioxide. In other words, depending on whether the battery is charging or discharging, 
the electrode either has a very strong attraction for CO2 molecules or no attraction whatsoever, making both capture and release very efficient processes. And it's not just about giving fossil fuel power plants yet another excuse to keep burning coal and gas. In some soft drink bottling plants, for example, fossil fuel is burnt to generate the carbon dioxide needed to give the drinks their fizz. And some farmers burn natural gas to produce carbon dioxide to feed their plants in greenhouses. The new system could eliminate that need for fossil fuels in these applications and in the process actually be taking the greenhouse gas right out of the air, says Voskin. Alternatively, the pure carbon dioxide stream could be compressed and injected underground for long-term disposal. So two very exciting and potentially game-changing technologies on their way to a market that on its current trajectory looks set to become a multi-trillion dollar opportunity for these new world pioneers. That's it for this week. Please do give us a like and a share if you found the program enjoyable. And if you haven't already done so, you can really show your support for the work we're doing here by subscribing to the channel and clicking on the little bell icon to get notified of when the new content gets published each week. Absolutely free to do that and dead easy of course. You just need to click on the subscribe button down there or click on that icon there. As always, thanks very much for watching. Have a great week and remember to just have a think. See you next week.